Parshas Lecha. It's like the third, fourth Maimur in. Also Torah Or? Torah Or. Torah Or, Lecha. We're going to stay with Torah Or for a little while. Parshas, you go, girl. Lecha, <coughs> the origin of you go, girl. Right, right, right. Uh huh. How is that? What? Well, it's just, you know. <laughs> Have you right. heard the expression before? You go, girl? It had to come from somewhere. Lechlecha. Lechlecha, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, Ariel, you see no, um, see Ariel? Yeah, he's uh, doing his thing. He'll be around. He'll surface eventually. Okay. Surface eventually. So, page 24. <coughs> it says that the... You will make a parochis. You will sep- you will separate with a parochis, right? Where the parochis will be a separation for you is officially what it means. You're my hero. Actually, you're a hero. My hero. So this the parochis will be a separation for you. So he says. Uh, actually, you know, I'm thinking for a second before we go there. You know what? The, the first one? I'm thinking maybe the first one. Is it like more basic, no? It's not more basic, but it's also mm. a sweet one. I, cause, mm, tough call. Let's go with the first one. It's nice. Really nice. <coughs> Changed my mind real quick. Midstream. It's an audible. Koch Moscow. You say Koch Moscow because of uh, because what? Because now you just pulled down. Yeah, this whole mimer is about the Koch Moscow. Oh, there we go. That's a, that's a good <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, times two. Hine. Okay, we'll start really start from the one. from the top. Hine Avram, who seichel haneela mikol rayo. There you have it right there. Avram represents the intellect which is hidden beyond all idea, which is basically the koach hamaskil, right? So it says Hine haseichel haneela. This is what Avram represents. In other words, it's an it's an uh, be, be, it's an type of intellect which is beyond all uh, revelation. It's a it's a hidden intellect, and that's indicated in his name, which is basically what we talked about as the koach hamaskil to a certain degree, right? It's a certain le- like source of intellect. Do you remember what we said about the koach hamaskil? It's a source of the intellect where you don't even really know that it's there. Other than the, the fact that like an idea comes into your chokhmah, no, it's there. So you know it comes from somewhere because you know you didn't sort of invent it. It popped into your mind from its source, but you can't identify its source. Mm-hmm. <coughs> There's a similar idea. It's a it's a seichel hanelam. It's a hidden hidden sort of realm of intellect, and that's what the word av ram means. Av represents what? Father. Father. And re- father represents what? Sphira. Uh, Chochma and Ram, Ram uh, elevated Chochma. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the Chochma beyond the revealed aspects of Chochma. What are the revealed aspects of Chochma? Chochma Vatsilus and below. Anything above Chochma Vatsilus is in the Kesser, is in the Orin Sof. It's like the hidden. So it's literally, you said the right word there. But Tzrich Lahavin, or Tzrich Lios, Bechines Giloi. That this level of exalted seichel needs to be in a state of revelation. We want to see it. The hainu, the seder ishtalshalus, which means we want to get to a level, we want it to come into a seder ishtalshalus, to trickle down, mebechines chakim below bechach meyadiyah, which is quite literally the koach hamaskil, that we want, it, we want it to go from a state of chakim below bechach meyadiyah. What does it mean, chakim? First of all, is anyone familiar with that? That statement, Hakim, below b'choch miyadia. Yeah, it's in the uh, Pasach Eliyahu. Right, Pasach Eliyahu. <coughs> you know what that is? Pasach Eliyahu? No. no? Erev Shabbos. Erev Shabbos Mincha. You should borrow. Uh-huh. You say that. You should say that every every week if you can't help it. It's a it's also, it's a very nice thing anyway, but it's also. Oh, before, like, before, before Mincha, bef- during Kar- yeah after Karbanos in. Mm-hmm. This thing right here, Pesach, oh. Pesach Eliyahu. Here, give it to him. Over there, it talks. It's it's like sort of the. What does it mean, Pesach Eliyahu? Pesach Eliyahu means Eliyahu opened up and said. So it's the it's the words of Eliyahu Anavi, literally. 
taken from the Zohar on the basic setup of all the spheros and, and, and the worlds. In other words, it's a very fundamental Kabbalistic treatise right there. And he said what? And in, what? Eliyahu said who? Where? What? Eliyahu and Navi. That's the thing that we read is the, is the words of Eliyahu and Navi um, about the basic ten spheros and, and like how the worlds work and basically like it's a whole Kabbalistic sort of basic yeah. treatise. Wow. You, know, you read it every week? I don't read it in, in English. So you know. read it in English? I don't. Oh, okay. So you should try and work with it for a day or two. Translate yeah. it. It's, it's an amazing thing. What yeah. he says over there, but amongst the thing he says, you read that though. It's big. I, I, I All right, you got to make a strong yeah. commitment now yeah. this it's week, every week, to read it here? before yeah. Mincha. So if, they, if you ever see one, you, know you read that Hodu and and that. It's important. Okay. So. In there it says, Chakim velo b'chach miyadiyah, that Hashem is wise with an unknowable wisdom. And basically we want to bring the level of Avram, that's, that's what Avram is. Avram represents the exalted wisdom, he's, he's wise with an unknowable wisdom. And, we want to bring, and the goal is to bring that down into a knowable wisdom. <clears throat> but Bechinus Yerida, we want to take it down to a state of descent, Mimidrega Madrega. From level to level, ad sof until the end. Vatachlis hulios giloi bebia ganid and elyon vatachton, and the and the purpose ultimately is that it should reveal itself down in the lowest worlds. In other words, the unknown wisdom of Hashem, which technically is above atzilus, right? Because if you are wise with unknowable wisdom. So, the, okay, there's a few different explanations on this, depending where you look, actually, in, in, even in this safer, <coughs> there's a sort of, it's a little bit of a gray area. What does it mean, Chakim? And what, what does it mean, Chochmi Yadiya? So, first of all, the word Chakim means like a, it, 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 it doesn't really mean wise, it means the one who makes wise. He, he, he's Chakim, he makes, he, makes, he makes wisdom, right? Mm-hmm. And... But therefore, he's the maker of wisdom. It's like wisdom as it, as it, chokhmah as it is in its source, and therefore it's not chokhmah yedi. It's not a knowable chokhmah yet because it's sort of the preliminary source of chokhmah. Chakim velo be chokhmah yedi. What is he making wise? In other words, it's it's the it's Hash, it's the it's Hashem who makes the sphere of of chokhmah. So before he actually makes the sphere of chokhmah, he's called chakim. He's the source of it, who is a chokhmah maker. But it hasn't actually made it yet. It's still connected so with him. Himself. It's in himself still. So that's like you could say, for example, like Kesser, where the spheres have not yet actually come out, but they're already in. They're already sort of in. They're in their source, in a hidden way, right? If if Atzilus is the first time when you have, for example, lights inside of vessels, right? That Hashem actually creates the vessels of Atzilus and puts the lights of Atzilus into those vessels. Yeah? But they're godly vessels. So above Atzilus, in Kesser and beyond, there's no vessels yet. So there's just basically light, and the light is not minimized and constricted by any particular vessel. So therefore, it's sort of in an infinite state. So it's, it's impossible to call it a knowable wisdom at that point, because it hasn't come into any con- confines yet. Right. So what, that's called Hakim. It's like a wisdom maker, but it hasn't actually made wisdom yet at that stage. It's like a, it's a, it's a preliminary stage. And that's what we're saying is called Avram. That's like the sort of level of Avram before he gets going and, and oh, we're going to see his, his name t- his becomes Avraham. Right? And his, init- his, his initial state was that he was this exalted wisdom that could not really be experienced yet. He represented a level of godliness which had not yet expressed itself into the world. Hmm. And the idea being is that there's a little bit of a conflict. What does it mean, knowable wisdom? Right, so Hakim is beyond knowable wisdom and says, You are wise with an unknowable wisdom. So I've seen different places where we're going to find out exactly what he's saying here, but a knowable wisdom could be Atzilus, the, the Chokhm of Atzilus, because even though it's sort of beyond comprehension, at least it's come into a vessel which can then be harnessed in some way or another. Or you can go a step, step lower, that real knowable wisdom is already the wisdom of Bria and below, because it's already come into the creation, mm-hmm. as it were. And it's, it's, actually, cool it's actually something yesh me'ayin. Bria from Atzilus is considered like a something from nothing. Atzilus is still sort of in the realms of the, of the Ein Sof. Atzilus is called the end 
of the worlds of the Ein Sof. So is that really called a knowable wisdom? But on one hand, it could be called a knowable wisdom because at least it's come into some kind of vessels, not to get bogged down into that detail right now. But whatever it is, Avram is not that. Avram is Hakim. He's still at the level of beyond settling. But the purpose is to bring that level all the way down to the world, into a state of Bia, Bria, Yitzir, and Asiya, which is also called Gan Eden Elyon, Vitachton. Right? What's called, what, what, what is, how does Bria, Yitzir, and Asiya correspond with Gan Eden Elyon and Vitachton? What did we see before is like the Gan Eden, like the Garden of Eden. So Eden was like one level, the garden was one level, and the, and the river was one level. Right. Okay, so but that, that's all taking place in what world? In Atzilus. In Atzilus. Chochem Vatzilus, which says, was Aden. Oh, okay. Bina Vatzilus is the river flowing out from Aden. Yeah. And it comes toward the garden, which is Malchus of Atzilus. Oh, Malchus of Atzilus already has like a bit of a shaykh to Bria, because the Malchus of Atzilus is going to invest its life force into Bria. So if you want to taste from the garden, as it were, the higher level of God Aden is called Bria. <clears throat> the lower level of Gan Eden is called Yitzira, in general. So, we want this level of exalted wisdom to come down so it can be tasted and, and experienced in the world of Bia, which is the idea of Gan Eden, Elyon, and Tachton. Tainu Hadivroi, meaning to say it should come into a realm where it, it can actually be experienced and, and the creations can have time from it and benefit from it. As it is, it's Hashem's exalted wisdom beyond Atzilus. Great. You know, but we want that to come out into the world so it, we, can, we can experience divine pleasure even in the created world. So the whole idea is, basically what we're saying is, Lech Lecha, he doesn't totally delineate it at this point, but Lech Lecha, Vayomer Hashem El Avram, El Avram, excuse me, Hashem said to Avram, what is Avram? This exalted wisdom. And what is he telling you to do? Lech lecha. Get out of here. It's enough of you like being in the exalted state of Kesser. Go down. Right? To Beis Avicha. In other words, to Artzacha. In other words, all these are three different levels as we're going to see. What's that? Go out of everywhere. Yeah, keep going down. You know, first to the land, then to the house of your... Then to your your birthplace, then to your 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 uh, your was father's he, house, was he going to which is basically we're going to see we're going to tra- we're going to translate all those different levels. Oh, they all have They're all like certain a, a, t- a continuation of the descent through spheros. Each one of them is going to represent a different le- level of a sphera that we want to keep pushing this exalted wisdom, this like level of Kesser, which is beyond the world. We want to push it down, not just so it can be found in Atzilus, but even further, it can be found in Bria, it can be found in Yitzir, it can be found all the way in Asiya. We want to get like godliness to be translatable and experienced in the world. And that's the whole statement. Hashem said to exalted wisdom, go down. Wasn't he going to... Canana or like Eretz Israel, like you know, on the Peshat level, yeah. he was going to Eretz Israel. But so okay, uh, a, this is sort of a physical possible place. <clears throat> it's a, it's an Aliyah, and you read it. But in, in general, it's um, it's it's what he's saying here is that it's a it's a it's a Yerida, not like so to speak that something is going down. It's a, it, it, that itself is an Aliyah. The fact you can the fact you can the world is now going to be able to contain. Godliness on a, on, a, on a new level, which is only relevant in the, uh, above Atzilus, that's a tremendous aliyah for the world. Right? So in other words, for, when the world want to have an aliyah, they want to experience more and more godliness. So that for us is going up. But for godliness, that's, that's coming uh, down. Okay. Interesting. So it's, it's one and the same. <clears throat> Actually, if you look at the little parentheses, which we sort of skipped right under the words, Parshas Lech Lecha, mm-hmm. yeah? Look what it says. Inyan Lech Lecha, Right, we're going to discuss because this is unusual because there's no pusik. Usually, there's like the, the, the Maimarim start with a pusik. This doesn't start with a pusik, right. right? So, he sort of tells you what pusukim this is based off. This is Mistam of the Tzemach Tzedek that wrote this parenthesis. And he says, The Indian of Lech Lech Ava Yelech Lemasav, Avram went according to his journeys. And look at this, Mimata Lamaila, Umimai Lamata. He goes, he goes, must go from below to above and from above to below. There's it's both. Contained in the words lech lecha. Cool. 
Okay, so there you have it. We're both right. So, anyway... What was that? He, Baruch asked, is, is, in the Pshat, Avram is sort of going, having an aliyah, going up to Eretz Yisrael. Right? He's going from Haran to Eretz Yisrael. So how does the Pshat that Avram is having, like going, Ole you know? Right, okay. how, does that conti- how does that work with what we're saying, that Avram is a level of exalted wisdom coming down to the Aretz? So I say it's both, basically. And that's, this wow. parenthesis says that the journey of Avram is both from below to above and below, above to below. And those Lech Lecha can be seen in both ways, and we're going to get into that. Cool. Is Aliyah and Aliyah the same words, like coming to Israel and going up to the Torah? Yeah, because Aliyah means to go up. When you go to Israel, you don't just come, you go up. Yeah. Okay, so, Vezeu <coughs> Inyan, yeah? Everyone with me at the period? Four, five lines down. Welcome back to Tzfas, uh, Levi. <laughs> yeah. Aruch Hashem. All right. <laughs> yeah, bring it out, man. Okay, Vizeu <laughs> Inyan. The truth is, didn't, that wasn't even there yesterday. So it's crazy. Yeah. What do you when you, you eat something in your sleep? Dude? <laughs> it's eating good. <laughs> Ellie's feeding him some of that lettuce stuff. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> all right, let's go on. Five lines down. Five lines down. Vizeu Inyan Chesed Isgal Yibapuma Deima. And this is what it means that chesed is revealed in the mouth of the mother. And the simplest, uh, the, the simple pshad is, of course, that the mother speaks chesed. In other words, ches- when you have a, mo- a mommy, chesed comes out of her mouth, right? In other words, that's, uh, she's, she's kind. But the, we're talking in spheros now. So this is the Indian that chesed is revealed in the mouth of the mother. Who's the mother? Bina. Bina. And basically... What's Bina is directly above the <coughs> Midos, right? So you have Chochma Bina and then the six Midos starting with Chesed. So Chesed is revealed in the mouth of the mother. What's the mouth of the mother? In general, what's the mouth? What sphere is, is represented by the mouth? Hmm. Um, no, Malchus. 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 It says it in Pesach Eliyahu. Malchus Pe, Torah Shabal Pe Karinos. Malchus is the mouth. It goes and explains all the... All the uh, spheres according to the body parts, and it says Malchus Peh. Malchus is the mouth. The so speech is Chachma. Brings everything out, I guess. Um, Chachma is connected to Malchus, let's say, because like it's sort of like the Chachma supernal version of the speech. But like Chachma is the highest, Malchus is the lowest. So there's a sort of binding force okay. between them. But in general, what are we connecting this to? Where does this come from? So we're ta- okay. <laughs> Suddenly they were talking about the, what'd you say? Yeah, what, what, what okay, happened? because we're saying that Avram is what? He ultimately is Chesed, right? Avram represents Chesed in general. Avraham. Avraham. And we're saying Avram <coughs> is exalted wisdom. So we want it to come out. So how does it come out? So it, when it's going to come out as Chesed, it's going to re- be revealed at the mouth of the mother. What's the mother? Bina. What's the mouth of the mother? Malchus of Bina. And from that place is going to reveal the chesed, which is going to be this step, step level of Avraham. You know, it was just the, the working its way down right. so of the Avraham, of the exalted wisdom, is going to pop out in the realm of chesed. So it's saying how it's going to reveal itself. Through Bina. Yeah. Through Bina. Yeah. Machos of Bina, huh? Okay, let's see. He's going to, yeah, so far, yes. Lios gile hashpa b'chines hiskashrus v'hu yoshev pesach ha'ohel. Basically, and he's saying that the osgiloi hashpa to bring forth the hashpa the bechinas hiskashrus. In other words, that it's still the hashpa can come out in two ways. One that it's no longer connected to its source; it sort of pops out as a as a separate entity. One is that it reveals itself while it's still connected to its source. That's what he says here. It's a giloi hashpa the bechinas hiskashrus. It's revealing something in a way that it's still connected to its original status. So even though the Chochmah is coming out, usually a lot of things come from a high place to a low place. I mean, that's not a Chiddush. But the Chiddush is that it should maintain its state of Hiskashrus, of its connection. It shouldn't change all that terribly much when it comes down so that it can, that it can bring godliness into the lower realms and not just sort of be a Hishtashrus from godliness to worldliness, which is how everything else got there. You follow that concept right there? 
Most things, basically, everything comes down the Ishtalshlus, but the problem is, is that they come down through contractions, and by the time it comes out, you have something other than what it was before. So what we're trying to say is we want to say, Avram, Lech Lecha, we want this exalted wisdom as you are, to go down to be experienced sort of something outer worldly, but even in the world. So it's a Giloy of Hashpa, this Chesed, the mouth of the mother, basically, is, is, is a revelation of the higher realms, still connect, even when they come out, they still maintain their, their, their connection and their faithfulness to their original status of how they were above. Clear? Clear. Mm-hmm. And that's what it says, Avram, again, like another sort of symbolic Pusik that says the same thing, Yoshev Pesach HaOhel. What is Avram's deal? He sat at the door of the tent, Right? So again, it's a similar notion, like, what's the tent? We're going to say it's sort of Bina. And Avram is Chesed. And he's sitting at the door of the tent, basically showing that he's coming out through this opening of Bina. Avram sitting, at, so to speak, at the, at the door. The door is like the mouth. It's the same idea. Just like the mouth of the mother, so you have the tent, you have the door of the tent. And Avram's sitting right there. In other words, he's ready to come out and express himself mm. there. Mm. You follow? No? Yeah, Lost? It's, it's the process. It's not it's, complicated. It's, it's speaking about the process, right? It's exactly the going to Irish Israel and stuff. I mean, from here to there and there. So we're just saying all those steps are staged on the way down. Explaining the process of how it goes from uh, Abram to... Abram. In other words, this Beis Avicha... What's Beis Avicha usually represent? What does it mean, the Beis Avicha? Lech lecha mi artzicha, mi molartzicha, mi beis avicha. Beis avicha, it's the where where uh, the house of the is. father. What's the house of the father? Beisav. The mother, oh. right? In other words, if if chokma is the father, what house? What's the house of the father? Okay. Bina, where chokma is housed. You know, I'm just giving you a little example. Like all these things that we're talking about, is going to Eretz Yisrael. They're all like, they're all Hasidic sort of uh, dimensions that the the the, the is coming. Further and further through. You're saying it's Israel's Bina? Anyway, I, I don't want to put in all the details there because there's there's a few different ways that they translate it from above to below, from below to above. So I don't want to confuse anybody. Right? I'm just saying, like for a sort of like an example yeah. of Turb Levi, like how does it have to do with this with the pasuk? Each one of those of those stops that he goes from this place, from this place, from this place, it's all a continuation of bringing the chokhmah down through all the worlds until it can come into the physical world. What's ultimately at stake here? This is, remember, before Matan Torah. Mm-hmm. This Avram lived before Matan Torah. And not only did he live before Matan Torah, but he was the first of the seven shepherds who were going to make Matan Torah a possibility. Mm-hmm. Right? Because from, uh, basically from him, it, it was seven generations until Moshe who actually brought the Torah down. So all those people that lived before them, before Moshe, they were the, the, the sages, Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, etc., the ones who brought the Torah down, ultimately, they were all a, pre, a preliminary stage of Matan Torah. What is Matan Torah? It's Elokus, sort of breaking the, the, the world barrier and presenting oh. itself inside of physicality, inside of, inside, of, inside of worlds, right? Whereas before you had Matan Torah, what did you have? You had a situation where... As it says, Hashemayim Shemayim La Hashem, Ba'aretz Nasan Libnei Adam. You had the heavens were the heavens for God, and the earth was the, for man. And there was and there was this sort of divide, as we call it a gezera, like the famous gezera we talk about, that, like a king, who who makes a good decree that the children of Rome cannot go down to Syria. It's interesting, it's going on today, and this and the and the people of Syria cannot go up to Rome. There was a decree, and Hashem lifted the decree when He gave the Torah, and He says, okay. The lower ones can come up and the higher ones can come up. There could be a fusion of, of spirituality and physicality. Godliness can actually find its way down into physicality. right? And be, because before that, what happened, there was physicality, but godliness, when it tried to come into physicality, it became materialized and it ceased to be godliness. It sort of lost its origin. It lost its his kashrus. That's what I was saying before. It lost its... its uh, faithfulness to its godly level and as it started to come down it sort of went through the Ishtal Shluss, became contracted and became world so even though it was God it was God as he presented himself as a world he, he sort of was hiding so there was a some so the Matan Torah was the ultimate change of that that 
Hashem brought actual elokus into the world in the form of the Torah. In order to get there, there was a stages of 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 uh, preparation. Avram was the Avraham was the first. So his whole journey and everything is exactly that journey. It's the idea of getting su- supernal godliness to come down into the physical world. He didn't actually ac- accomplish the physical giving of the Torah, but had he not done his job, that Torah couldn't have been given seven generations later. Wow. Wow, wow. Clear? So it all started with Avram. Avram uh, is the first. Chad Haya Avram. So that we're saying, like he's now sitting at the gate of the of the... He's at the gate of the, at the door of the tent. It's like he's on his way. He's coming out of the tent like this place. He's going to reveal himself. He's chesed out of the mouth of the mother. It's, it's like he's, he's coming out from above, sending himself down below. Ah, Giloize. How does he go from Chochmah to Bina, though? It just happens. It, it doesn't just happen, but that's what we're going to describe. Ah, that's what the Mimer goes into. Yeah. Ah, okay. Ah, Giloize. This revelation, who are the tzimtzumim? The helam, bechinas, choshech de yitzchak. So in order to come down, you can't get down without a tzimtzum, right? In other words, we're not saying that the actual level of hakim finds itself down in such a way where it's exactly the same as it, as it was before, because that is an impossibility. Why? Because it's a source and it's going to be in the same place, contractions. It's yeah, it will nullify everything out of it. Just like up there, there's no yeah. worlds and everything. In other words, we're saying that there is still a measure of contraction for it to come down. What we're saying is there's two types of contractions. I'm going to have to yeah. basically lay this on you real quick here. There's something called derech mavir, mavar, excuse me, and his, his lavshus, derech hislavshus. Okay, let's just talk about this for a second. It'll, it'll help us out. First of all, derech hislavshus. Anyone know what the difference between these two things are? We've talked about them before, not for a while. Investing itself in something and... Uh... Investing itself is derech hislavshus. When a high thing comes to a low thing, it can, it can go in a way which calls investiture. Right? Hislavshus. Huh? Lights in kalim? Lights in kalim. And an example for this is basically, let's say, uh, the teacher teaches it to this one student, another student teaches it to another student, another teacher teaches it to another student. To another student. And every time that that is done, the basic concept is passed, passed on, but the letters completely change. Because the way I understand it, it's going to come out of my mouth in certain words. You're going to take those words in, you're going to sort of lose the words, sort of get the content, and then repackage it in your own words based on your own, your own level, your own intellect. And you're going to then put it into the next guy. And he's going to basically take now a ray of the original concept which is sort of passed through through, a, through, a, through a, an investiture into new le- letters and you're going to take that out sort of take the letters off put your own letters on there and pass it on again so every time it goes to the next level it gets invested and therefore changed inside of the each world down each student down and therefore what the, by the time it comes out at the end it's a completely different letter combination I mean there is some semblance of a, of a resemblance to the original, but it's really invested itself, invested itself to the point that it's completely changed its form. It's different letters, and therefore it's basically a different entity. That's one way of going through these Seder Ishtashos, that every place you go gets its hands on the light, turns the light essentially into, it, into a type of light which is now relevant to its level, and, ch- and changes it in some really dramatic way. Is mavir? That's not mavir. That's his his oh, okay. That's called investing. Each world right. gets the investing. Then there's mavir, mavar, which a mavar means you pass through, right? Which means you come throughout, you come down to all the seder ishtoshlus, which means there are contractions, because that's what it means to go through the seder ishtoshlus. You're contracted. You're getting lower and lower, smaller and smaller, but you're not changing anything. And what is that likened to? A person who has an idea in his head and he writes it down, the same exact letters in writing, which means that you, ha- you started off with letters of thought, which is a very spiritual high thing which really can't be contained, in other words, in, in, a, in a physical place, like besides your brain, but it's, it's, it's very ruchni. And then you take those letters and you put it on ink on paper, right? So it's, 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 it's a massive contraction. You've just taken something spiritual, a thought, and you've made it into something actual that you can pick up with your hands and, 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 and run around with. 
But it's the exact same letters. And it was nothing has actually changed. Even though it's gone through the Seder Ishtal Shlus, and it, something has changed, it's gone from spiritual to physical, but in essence, it has not changed its, its contours. It's the exact same letters. You understand? So there's two ways. You can go down by changing everything and it, because the light gets transformed by each world's own limitations. And when it comes out the other end, it's basically different. Or it can sort of just pass through. That's what it means mavar. You pass through the world, which you, you do get affected by the limitation of, the, of them to a certain degree because to fit into them, you have to sort of climb into the, a smaller version of, of the letters. But ultimately, you're, you're, really, you're revealing the same exact letters. And that's what the Torah is. Even though the Torah is a physical document, those same letters exist without any change. Like that's what we preserve it with our lives, like every nuance of every crown and every letter, because those are the actual letters of, of Atzilus Torah, and beyond that Silas Torah, but, but there they're not condensed into physical letters. They're in a sort of expanded state of, of, of godliness. But they, they're the exact same letters. We have the pattern and the platform and sort of the DNA preserved. Whereas that's the Torah. When it comes to the world, the world is also made up of letters. But every time it goes to another world, the letters change. And, they, and, and, and it's like someone else describes it in his own language. And so by the time it gets down here, it's not a... And a, 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 a um, faithful representation of the letters as they as they are up there. It's a whole concealment. It looks like something else. That's why people take it for a world and not godliness, because the godliness is, gets invested into each level and winds up looking very different than it does in its source. Is that clear? Yeah. Is the um, is the mavir will be like nefesh yeah, yeah. Yeah. You could say okay. that. Right. So. So that Sorry, being said, point of not here. well, it goes down, changes, but changes, but the stays unchanged. It's like letters that you it write goes down. Down changes, but like it gets cha- contracted, it, 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 but it stays unchanged. You never show it. Like goes goes from up to down, and then it's not. It's not, it's contracted. So it's exactly the same, but it, it is the same. It doesn't depend on like, like it gets clear. So how does that work with the oral law? With the with the oral yeah, law, same thing. thing. That, it's, it's also it's also the letters the of the oh, like the the, le- the the letters of the written law so are the letters of what like what's going on. Same. Let's what say yeah, in Atzilus. Right. Exactly. Letters of the oral law like is God's right. letters and in the in the lower world. In other words, how godliness itself describes itself in order to make a world of Bria in its in its origin is the Gemara. A world of of Yitzira is the Mishnah. So those letters are the godly letters that are enlivening those higher worlds. We also have them come down here. So in other words, there's a... Yeah. So in other words, the totality of all the oral law letters and the written law letters, they're all collectively one. I mean, they're, they're, it's not, you can't really say it's necessarily a translation of the written law is the oral law. For the simple matter that if you look at the... It's, it's more of just like an, of a revealing... Because the, the written law, let's say, it doesn't tell you how to, what, what to fill in are, right? The written law just right, says, right. put totifos on your... So there's, there's something else being... There's more letters there that are not actually uttered, but they're still godly letters of Torah. So the first time we see them is in Bria. But it doesn't mean that Bria is a translation and a, and a corruption of the letters of, of the written Torah in Atzilus. Well, it's just a revelation of more letters that we didn't even know was sitting inside. In other words, the Torah is 600,000 letters, which really intrinsically contains many, many, many more letters than that, which you just can't see unless you sort of bring it to another world. But that's not a translation. Uh, you see what I'm saying? It's just a, pretty a translation would mean that you actually, it, it, it's, it's something other than Torah suddenly. It, for those letters like <coughs> translate themselves into a language which makes a world, which doesn't look like Torah anymore. It's a good point you bring out. I hope I'm cl- clarifying it for you. I'm not sure if you, yeah, you understand what I'm saying. It would be revelation. You know? It would be revelation. This is, this is a translation. If it brings down the same, but expands on it, it's the same. It's <clears throat> So I wouldn't call it really a translation. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's not a translation. It's a further elucidation of the same letters. Whereas translation means you're translating from one language to another. You're changing it. So that's where that's called worldliness. Elucidating on the Torah is just bringing the very same godliness down to different levels. Rashi elucidated some little comments in there. So where, why did I get into this? Because the, it, the giloy of Avram, or yeah. of, of this exalted wisdom coming down, it is through tzimtzumim, the helam, 
But of course, it's going to be like a, a healthy kind of helm. It's not a, t- a type of... Hashem doesn't want to conceal it to the point that it becomes no longer visible as godliness. He wants to bring it down in a way of mavar, which is that it comes down and gets contracted but it doesn't lose its, its gist. And that's called Bechines Choshech de Yitzchak. De Yitzchak. Yitzchak represents that level. Yitzchak is the, is the contraction of Avraham, but in such a way that it really is not contracting Avraham, it's bringing Avraham to the next generation, mm. but in such a way that it does it by maintaining exactly what Avraham is, just putting it into, the, into a, a, new, a new level, lower, that can handle it. So it's, so it's Mavir? That's Mavir. And also double shoot. And what? And it's both, both levels. Mm-mm. It's just Mavir. I'm saying, in order to get the, the, the level of Hislav Shu is already sitting there. Because when I, the, the, the regular way that the world came into being was by Derech Hislav Shu. But mm-hmm. Hashem basically had godliness, and right. it quickly went from level of translation and, so to speak, corruption of its true meaning, world, 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 world. And so for there, now you have godliness over here and worldliness down here. So the, that was, that's the original Hislav Shu, it's just the creation of the world. But now you want to get the godliness to come down. Now you have to start a process of derech mavar. Right? So you're going to get the godliness to go through all those stages of world and not change like the way it did the first time. Right. That's Yitzchak. But it's but Yitzchak, it's Gevura. So, but, so it's from Chesed, it changed to Gevura. Or it's, mixed. But it's not, it's, in other words, it's still, it does go down a level. In other words, it's the difference between thinking the letters and writing the letters. There is a team to but it's the same thing. Yitzchak ben Avram. Avram holy that's Yitzchak. And they even looked exactly alike, it says. We're going to find out in Parshish Told what's coming up. He was just a continuation of Avram Mamish. But yes, in a slightly different form. But again, what kind of... There's two ways to change form. You can go changing form by changing the thing Mamish. Or you could just send the same thing down in, a, in, a, in like a, a different package. Right? That's Mavar. So Yitzchak was the continuation of Avram exactly as he was, but just to a lower level. Whereas, let's say, Yishmael and the other sons of Avram, they didn't get that. They changed it and it became something else. Not godliness, idol worship. Yeah? Um, so, what about the symptom of Avram? Is that according to the first type of symptom? Or symptom? Yeah, the whole Avram's whole business is the, is the Derech Mavar. It's the it's trying to shoot down godliness as is. Oh, as is. So, yeah. So, what about the other form of symptom? What's it called, first of all? Where he's investing slightly changed according to the... Hislavshus. Because of the word levush, garment. It gets enclosed. So, so... Yeah. 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 Yeah.
You mm. follow that, Ariel? Yeah. Just on a massive mm. scale. Yeah. Right. So this is exactly what we're saying that it's erev avoker right. yom echad. You want to say something? Now we can do a physical mitzvah, or we can pick up a book, which is right. paper and ink and right. So the paper and the ink to begin with was not godliness. Right. It's just the yeah. this is paper and ink, but now it's. Right, because this is the other aspect of divinity which which crawled into this world and maintained a status of godliness when you put the paper and ink together in a certain way so you nullify the paper and the ink and you make you realize that it's not something separate from God, it's part of God, it's Torah. Exactly. So the Mahar is saving physical and elevating spiritual? Basically, and it's... And then is doing the opposite. Yeah, uh-huh. well said. So that's the idea, but the whole process of Avram going down in a certain sense, it accomplishes both. And it was, we're, we're, we're describing these things as two different processes. But in reality, it's sort of the, the same thing. As, you know, take for example the Derech Mavar, where we talked about the thoughts going down into, the, on, into, a, into a paper, and you're, you're bringing godliness from a spiritual place <coughs> to a physical place, that also requires a certain tzim zoom into a physical place. But simultaneously with the physical place, it, 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 it nullifies the physical place. And that's what we're saying by Avraham, that going Erev Uvoker, yes, there's a Tzimtzum, and so therefore it creates a Yesh. But since it's also Boker, which is, it brings revelation to that place, it's called Yom Echad. It's called, it's called the Day of Oneness, right? which is in distinction with the other days. Yom, yom Sheni, Yom Shlishi, Yom Revi, Yom Echad. It should, have, it should have said, Rashi said, it should have, should have said Yom Rishon. The fact that it says Yom Echad, is significant because it's trying to talk about the oneness of Hashem. So even though it's Erev and Voker, which is night and day, which is a contraction, which makes something look separate, but the day that comes after it is like a Mavir, it brings Elokus into that level of night and shows that the separateness is really God, therefore it's called Yom Echad. It's really, it maintains the oneness of Hashem, but even in a lower place. Should I say that again? You got that? That's Mavar. It's Mavar. That's what we're saying. So it creates the Yesh, but simultaneously it makes the Yesh battle to the eye. In other words, the fact there's a contraction, it means that you're going down into a lower place. You are making a Yesh. But the fact that it's Derek Mavar means that the Yesh is simultaneously battle to the eye because it's bringing Elokus into a state of Yesh. And therefore, it's Yom Echad. Don't get confused. There's actually some separateness going on over here, like Yom Sheni, where it's actually a day. This is a Yom of Echad. It's a day where everything is continuously one still. Complete. And Avram represents Yom Rishon, right? because the seven days of the week is from, Moshe, from, from Avram to Moshe. He represents day one. Erev Avoker, Yom Echad is Avram's thing, right? because he's the first of the seven spheros, day one, the day of oneness, because that's what he started in the world. Even though, yes, he came into a physical place, and by doing it, he turned the physical place back into godliness. Mm-hmm. I tell you, like, it's such like poetry, I mean... Very little of what we said is actually in, written down here. Because that's, that's the way the... I don't know, that's the Alter Rebbe. If you just read the words, it's, it's very, very hard to, f- to understand what he's talking about. There's like a sort of... He's sort of describing like a scene, like, you know, and, and, and you, have to, you have to use imagination. But I mean, I hope I'm not making things up. I've read... I mean, this is, this is, the, this is my work. This is what I do. So <laughs> basically, you got to trust me on this one. But uh, that's what's happening. No, it's, uh, that's why we're learning it together. Yeah, that's why I need you. The truth is, it's, it's, uh, when I first was introduced to Hasidus, this is the, my rabbi, this is what we learned every, every this is what we learned. So I, I, for, so I don't know, I have a very, very deep, special relationship with it. Wow. So, so I, sp- I mean, at that, in those days, because it's so hard to understand on your own, he would teach to me, and I would spend mamish hours upon hours upon hours, just as a side note, just pouring over the words and, and, and trying to really? recall like what, what he said through the words. I don't know, I spent a lot, long time with these, uh, yeah. these my Maureen. Wow. Anyway, cool. the Hine, not that I'm necessarily getting it right, but we'll try our best. L'chaim. The Hine, Lios Giloy Zeh, yeah, Levi. So he says, in order for there to be this revelation, back to Abraham, how is he going to be able to go lech lecha and really bring out this divinity and put it down where it belongs in a revealed state? You can't do it with a, with a foreskin. That is going to block you. What does the foreskin represent? 
it represents what makes things go in a way of his love shoes. And it was why does something become his love shoes as opposed to being able to go with Derek Mavar and like reveal the godliness? Because there's a foreskin on there. Covered. It's covered. When it tries to come out of the tip, there's a filth, there's like a tuma that like it gets wrapped into by the time it expressed itself, it's already come out as a goy. Right? It didn't come out with having removed the obstacles which enable the godliness to be seen. So this is what a yid is. Avram was the first person to have a circumcision and from him we have circumcision for the rest of reality. What is circumcision really? It's this notion of like removing this state from one world to another so that when you, when you, tri- when you bring something from one world to another, which is basically a child, right? You're making babies. You're creating from one state to another. You want to make it so that it comes out pure without getting you know, wrapped in tuma when it comes out. Because otherwise it becomes out something as Yes, part of the Father, but somehow separate and distinct and not connected. There's no hiskashrus. There's no inner connection to the Father. So the, the Mila is the secret to an, enabling the flow to come out pure and as it is. You follow? So without the circumcision, you don't get a... You don't get a, there. You don't get a Jew, right? You get a or you get a Jew who's, like, who's basically not allowed to... Like offer the carbon Pesach, right? You get you get something which is basically you're not able to f- perform Torah mitzvahs. It's the bris. It's the covenant. Like without that, you can't have the rest of it. So what is the bris and the covenant for? So that you can perform Torah mitzvahs. What is Torah mitzvahs? Bring ma- the ability to bring godliness out of this world and to reveal godliness. So there's a, there's a there's a there's a trick to it, right? Which is that you have to remove the blockages which 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 stops that from happening, and that's represented by the bris. By the foreskin, rather. So that when you circumcise your heart, then it's even like a higher level. Sure. The whole secret is to be circumcising yourself, like, sort of constantly, and now enabling godliness to permeate your nefesh of Bahamas, right? The whole thing is basically a very psychological story. We're talking about the world and everything, but we're talk- on a personal level, you want, to, you want your animal soul to, re- to resemble exactly your godly soul. Mm-hmm. Which means you want your godly soul to be going... You don't want it to be a godly soul because we're not saying that... Because in that case, you would nullify the worlds. Right. We want the worlds to be there, but we want them to be godly worlds. We want there to be a yesh. We want it to be bottled to the iron. So this whole process is taking place inside of us. We want our godly soul to translate itself down to the mind of the animal soul, the heart of the animal soul, the thought, the speech, and the action of the animal soul, which is basically putting godliness into all the lower worlds... The only way to do that is to circumcise your heart in this in this scenario. You have to like a, enable the flow to not come out dirty and contaminated. Wow. The mila. Yeah. Lasir arla to remove the foreskin. He clippus noga hachofefes. And this is the what is the what is the arla? It's the rex, it's the concept of clippus noga hachofefes, which which is surrounds and wraps itself mm-hmm. around. Mm-hmm. The, the kedusha, so that like a klippa shell, you don't see the kedusha anymore, right? In other words, as soon as it, that's what klippa does, it sort of wraps itself around like a fruit around, uh, like a sh- like a shell around the fruit or a peel around the fruit that you can't see it anymore. So usually, in a normal like worldly scenario, when godliness comes into this world, it gets right away wrapped up in klippa's noga, and therefore it's world instead of God, and you have to you have to like go through the whole process of trying to get it out of there. So removing the foreskin is removing the clippus noga so you can see that it is elokus. Shlo yela yenika. So it should not have be what's called a yenika. That a yenika means a suckling. suckling. That it should be suckling its energy from the dark side as opposed to the light side. Getting yenika from the clippa means that you are basically getting your life force. Suckling means you, how you live. You're getting your life force from the clippas, in which case you're like a walking you know, concealment of Hashem, as opposed to when you do the foreskin, you cut off that, that suckling from the clippers, and then you're just receiving your life for a straight from divinity, and then you're little, little Avraham. Mm-hmm. You cannot reveal godliness while the clipper is still sitting there. It won't, it won't come there. That's like, for example, what would have happened if, Av, if Adam Arishon ate from the tree of life after he already sinned. It's like Hashem won't let it come into that place. He kicked him out and put swords up all around, flaming, turning swords. Because he's like, once you've got the clip, I'm not going to let you live forever. I'm not going to give you the true elokus. Because I don't want that mixed in 
with darkness. If I give you godliness, it's like an eternal truth. I don't want that mixed in with darkness. You, I won't even send it down. I won't reveal the God unless you remove the clippers first. So because then you have sur meirava asay tov. You have to turn from evil and then you can do good. Kiim kashir chayusa. So um, that means except for the shir chayusa, which means the small measure of its life. In other words, and we'll stop here just on a, on a, a technical point, is that you're not allowed to send <coughs> godliness into the clippers. You have to remove the foreskin. You have to remove the clippers. No, okay? except for the small amount, which is called shiur chiyusa, the measure of its life. And it was that God wants there to be a certain minimal amount of klippa, because otherwise there won't be a world with which to nullify. Right? Klippa creates the, the yesh. Do. So you don't, you just cut off the tip, right? You don't cut off the... The idea is that, is that you, you still need there to be a certain minimal measure of Klippas Noga that God himself put into the situation. But if you don't remove the foreskin, that means you're adding, when you bring down Hamshachas, you're adding more clip as opposed to adding more light to nullify the Klippas. So, except for that little min, me, me, measured amount of clip that Hashem himself put into the creation, then the rest of it you have to remove the foreskin so that you don't bring more. You don't allow a yanika and a suckling for more of it. Just the minimal. And then you can bring Godliness into the world. And this is the Indian of Lech Lecha. Wow. Yenika? Uh, right? A suckling. suckling. Like a nursing of a baby. It's called Yenika. Like how you, you're drawing your life force. Alright. Did everyone understand the class today? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Maybe how'd you do in there? I'm not in the last That's one. That's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty nice. Okay, sure. Uh, concepts.